The blackouts that are in Texas are being made worse by the failure of wind turbines, many freezing in the icy weather. The major outages in the power grid came from thermal sources, such as natural gas and coal. This is what makes wind energy tricky. It's clean and powerful, but you can't control it. One day, it gives too much. The next, not enough. That's a big problem for power grids, which need to balance every second. Too much power or too little can crash the whole system. Wind doesn't follow rules. It doesn't care about demand. And fixing that isn't easy, especially for a small island like Ireland. They're trying to turn wild wind into steady power. But it comes with tough choices, hidden costs, and clever fixes. Can they pull it off? Let's find out. Let's dive in. Inside the turbine. To understand why wind power isn't simple, we need to look inside the turbine itself. From far away, it seems effortless. Blades spinning in the wind, quietly generating electricity. But inside the nacelle, hidden behind those giant blades, is a complicated machine designed to handle a very tricky problem. The blades rotate slowly, only about 10 to 20 times per minute. But generators need much faster speeds, around 1,800 revolutions per minute, to produce useful electricity. That's where the gearbox comes in. It multiplies the speed in three stages. First, planetary gears increase the speed by four times. Then, helical gears multiply it again, reaching the high RPMs the generator needs. But gearboxes are a weak link. They're heavy, around 15 tons, and despite being built to last 20, many fail in just seven. They crack, wear down, and break. Repairs are expensive and complex, especially offshore. These failures often start as tiny cracks on the bearings called white edge cracks. Over time, they spread and destroy the whole system. Catching the wind is only the beginning. Converting it into clean, steady electricity without breaking the machine is one of wind power's biggest engineering challenges. Skipping the gears. Gearboxes are one of the weakest points in a wind turbine. They break often, cost millions to fix, and are hard to replace, especially when turbines stand 100 meters tall. So engineers began looking for a better way. Their solution? Remove the gearbox entirely. This design is called direct drive. Instead of using gears to speed up the slow spin of the blades, the blades connect straight to a much larger generator that works at lower speeds. To match the grid's frequency, the generator needs many magnetic poles. The more poles it has, the more electric pulses it can produce per spin. The Haliadi X, one of the largest turbines ever built, uses a 10-meter wide rotor with 200 poles. It weighs 250 tons, no gearbox, fewer moving parts, and fewer breakdowns. But there's a trade-off. These generators need rare earth metals like neodymium and dysprosium, materials mostly controlled by China. Prices can jump fast. Supply can tighten. Still, Ireland is testing them at Galway Wind Park. They're big, bold, and promising. But like everything with wind power, solving one problem often reveals another. Chasing the right frequency. Electricity isn't just about how much power we have, it's also about timing. Every country's grid runs at a specific frequency. In Ireland, it's 50 hertz. That means the current must switch direction 50 times every second. If it drops even a little, systems can crash. Old-style turbines kept this rhythm by spinning at a steady speed, locked in with the grid. But modern wind turbines work differently. They spin faster or slower depending on the wind. That makes them more efficient, but the electricity they produce comes out at a changing frequency. To fix that, 
the power first passes through a rectifier that turns it into direct current. Then, an inverter changes it back to alternating current at exactly 50 Hertz. This process works, but it adds layers of complexity and delays, and the grid is sensitive. In the UK, operators once prepared for a tea time surge when a TV ad break sent millions to boil kettles. Wind doesn't follow those moments. It follows nature. And nature doesn't care about perfect timing. The missing weight. There's something invisible that keeps a power grid stable. It's called inertia. The force that resists sudden changes. Big spinning machines, like coal or nuclear turbines, have a lot of it. When demand suddenly rises, their momentum keeps the grid steady, buying time to adjust. Wind turbines spin too, but here's the problem. Their movement isn't directly connected to the grid. Inverters sit in between, converting the power into the right frequency. That disconnect means the grid doesn't feel the turbine's weight. No inertia. No buffer. This becomes dangerous when the system changes quickly. A sudden spike in demand or a drop in supply can cause the grid frequency to fall. In 2021, during a deep freeze, Texas came close to a total blackout. The grid dipped near 59 hertz, just one hertz away from disaster. Ireland faces a similar risk. With more wind and fewer traditional power plants, the grid becomes lighter, faster to shift, and harder to hold steady when it matters most. Now first, like always, be sure to hit the like button down below. It helps us out tremendously with the reach of this video. Thank you. Ireland's spinning answer. To fix the problem of low grid inertia, Ireland turned to something unusual, a giant spinning flywheel. Installed in 2023 on the site of an old coal plant, this 120-ton steel shaft spins at 3,000 revolutions per minute inside a vacuum chamber to reduce friction. It doesn't generate electricity like a turbine. Instead, it stores energy as motion. When the grid frequency drops, the flywheel instantly releases power at exactly 50 hertz. No delay, no startup time. It acts like the heavy turbines of the past, keeping the system stable during sudden changes. This flywheel uses power to get moving, then stays ready. It doesn't solve everything, but it helps. Ireland may need several more to fully support a wind-heavy grid. Still, it's a smart step, a modern solution in an old location bringing stability without smoke or fire. Just spin, silence, and balance. Reaching beyond the island. Ireland's power grid is mostly on its own. Unlike larger countries with strong cross-border links, Ireland only connects to Great Britain through two underwater cables. That isolation makes it harder to balance power, especially when the wind drops. But change is coming. A new interconnector with France is being built. A 700 megawatt link that can supply nearly 18% of Ireland's average electricity demand. It's a game changer. When the wind is strong, Ireland can export extra power. When it's weak, it can import stable energy, like France's nuclear supply. This back and forth makes the grid more flexible and less dependent on gas. Being connected means being stronger. For Ireland, this new link opens a door to Europe's energy network. And that means more wind, less waste. And a future where the island doesn't have to stand alone. The storage gap. Wind energy comes and goes, but people need power all the time. That's why storage is so important. Ireland currently has just one gigawatt hour of energy storage. On a cold evening, that's not even enough for an hour of power. Flywheels help stabilize the grid's frequency, but they can't hold energy for long. Batteries are another option, but building enough of them is expensive. Pumped hydro works well, too. 
but Ireland doesn't have many sites suited for it. Without better storage, Ireland must rely on gas plants to fill the gaps when wind slows. That means more emissions and higher costs. For wind to truly take over, Ireland needs a way to save energy when it's windy and use it when it's not. That's the missing piece. And solving it could change everything. Betting on hydrogen. Ireland's answer to storing wind energy might lie in hydrogen. When turbines produce more power than the grid can handle, that extra energy doesn't have to go to waste. Instead, it can split water into hydrogen and oxygen through electrolysis. The hydrogen is then stored as clean fuel for electricity, transport, or industry. This is phase one, using excess wind to make hydrogen. Phase two is bigger, building offshore wind farms just for hydrogen production. Ireland hopes to produce 39 terawatt hours by 2050. Hydrogen can be stored, exported, or turned into synthetic fuels. It gives flexibility that wind alone can't. With enough investment, Ireland could power itself and help fuel others too. It's not just about solving storage. It's about building something bigger, clean, stable, and ready for the world. Hydrogen could be the key to making wind Ireland's greatest strength. Ireland's hidden advantage. Ireland might be small, but it holds a rare mix of resources. Wind is just the beginning. It also has fresh water, plenty of it. A constant flow from its rain-soaked hills and misty valleys. That water is key to making hydrogen. No fresh water, no fuel. Then there's location. Ireland sits on the edge of Europe, right along major shipping routes. It's already a hub for air traffic, home to one of the world's biggest airlines. If hydrogen becomes the fuel of the future, Ireland is right where it needs to be. And not just for fuel. Synthetic hydrocarbons, clean versions of gasoline or diesel, can be made by combining hydrogen with carbon dioxide pulled from the air. Planes, cargo ships, heavy trucks, things that can't easily run on batteries will need these fuels. Most countries are still figuring out how to start. Ireland is already moving. With the right investment, it won't just be green. It could be rich, not in oil or coal, but in energy that never runs out. The wind is free, but turning it into something we can depend on takes work. Ireland stands at the edge of that challenge. It's building smarter turbines, stronger grids, new ways to store power, and bold plans for hydrogen. None of it is easy. There are risks, setbacks, and costs. But if it succeeds, Ireland won't just meet its own energy needs. It could become a global leader in clean power. The wind may be wild, but Ireland is learning how to shape it into something steady, something lasting. The future is blowing in, and Ireland is learning how to catch it.